Today's guest is Shannon Morrison from The Mighty Social Word, and it is an episode that you are going to want to tune in until the end because it is full of so many tips and tricks on how you can repurpose your content and more specifically, how you can repurpose your podcast into lots of different pieces of content. Welcome to Podcasting Tips and Tricks with Lyndall Harris, a show sharing quick, actionable tips, tricks, and advice to help you on your podcasting journey. Welcome back to another episode. It is so great to be back in your ears again for what I think or what I know is going to be a super helpful episode all about content repurposing. Now, I know that quite a few of you have been waiting for this episode to drop, so I'm really excited to bring to you today Shannon Morrison from The Mighty Social Word, and he has been helping podcasters repurpose their content for quite some time now. He runs Mighty Social Word, which is a successful digital marketing company that he created in order to help entrepreneurs and small business owners expand their presence online through engaging content. He is wickedly funny and an out-of-the-box dreamer who is just as likely to help you out with a complex content problem as he is likely to crack you up in a serious meeting. Shannon is a master of taking existing content and repurposing it into a variety of formats which allows his clients to focus on what they're good at and what they want to do. So from Facebook to Pinterest to TikTok to email, Shannon loves creating clickable content that gets his clients right where they need to be. And his holistic approach to online marketing enables him to help companies in various industries, giving his clients a seamless digital experience. And as I mentioned before, has worked with lots of different podcasters producing their shows. Welcome to the show, Shannon. Thank you so much, Lyndall. <laughs> well done. That was it is a big so bio. good. <laughs> <laughs> it was very cool. I was just like tripping over some of my words there. Now, I'm just going to preface this whole show with I've known Shannon online for a quite a while now and we've we've met and talked recently over the last few months and we've been trying to make this podcast episode happen <laughs> and every time we have a comedy of errors <laughs> it actually is and this morning we had another comedy of errors where my microphone wasn't picking up properly so <laughs> if if the audio quality in this show is a little bit under par then please forgive me it's got something to do with it's Shannon it's totally the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, antithesis of bad te- technology <laughs> Or something, yeah. <laughs> so absolutely no pressure at all either, Shannon. But just so you know, there's a number of people waiting for this episode to drop. There's uh, lots of questions on content repurposing. So we're going to jump straight in there. And I'm going to start with asking the first question of what is content repurposing and why repurpose rather than create new content? Yeah, cool. So look, content repurposing, I guess, you know, like all the gurus, and I use my bunny ears and go gurus, um, would uh, have, I guess, a slightly different take on what content repurposing is. What I, uh, what you know, what I always say is content repurposing is not reinventing the same thing over and over again um, and leveraging what you've already existed. So everybody is good at doing you know, one or two things. Um, but I, I find in, you know, like digital marketing world, you kind of have to be a jack of all trades and it doesn't fit for everyone all the time. And, you know, you can spend so much time just kind of creating the brand and creating the platforms and and, and doing that connections. And it just doesn't work for everybody. Um, you know, not everybody has the right skill sets. So for me, it's about you have a core piece of content, you know, a podcast, you know, I'm talking to you on your podcast. That's a a brilliant core piece of content um, because you're having a conversation and usually with somebody else or, you know, you're kind of downloading your skills and your knowledge and all of this amazing stuff into uh, an audio form. Now what you would then do instead of then going, right, now I'm going to write a blog post about that thing that I just talked about. And now I'm going to do social media content about what I just talked about. And now I'm going to do X, 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 X. What you can do with content repurposing is just take that audio and you might say transcribe it so that it's already done into uh, a you know written form for you. You can pull out some stuff and make it uh, make quotable things that you want from that podcast, of like the brilliant nuggets that you've got. Um, and you can take uh, stuff from a podcast. You know, say you've got 20, 30, 40 episodes. You can even go to the ex- the extreme length, I guess, of saying well, I'm going to pull all of this amazing content that I've got in here from these podcasts and I'm going to create an online course about how to launch a podcast. You know, your podcast is about podcasting. So um, 
you you will have all of that information there. So you're not starting at square one. Um, you could, yeah, outsource that kind of stuff. It's really, yeah, if you've got a solid brand and a solid idea about who you are and what you're putting out into the world, I would go so far as to say you can probably get about 16 different types of content out of one podcast episode. Um, so that to me is what content repurposing is. You know, it's not doing reinventing the wheel all the time and it's not, yeah, it's, it's not redoing all the things all over again. Um, yeah, and, I love that. Yeah. And if you do it right, um, like I was trying to think this morning before I spoke to you about what, what you know, cause I'm, I'm good at, well, I like to visualize what I'm talking about. So to me, if you've got a really good content purposing or repurposing, you know, machine or mechanism in place, it's kind of like a globe. So at the center and the core of that globe would be your podcast. And then you creating social content and you know, all these other like things of content, but then those pieces of content can then be repurposed into other forms of content. And so it becomes this big, you know, self fulfilling feeding entity, I guess, where you just are constantly leveraging off content. Um, to make up more content, which yeah. then easily to connect to people that way through that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And that the podcast piece is a great way for people to have that, create that content to start with, because a lot of people find that they can talk about things easier than they can sit down and write them. So it's it's just a Obviously, you can repurpose things out of your podcast. As a podcaster, you can repurpose things into your podcast. But today, we're going to talk about what you can do with yeah, getting yeah. content from your podcast more so. So, obviously, we've we sort of touched on it. I guess what I was going to ask you was what is the best content to repurpose? So, core, like for me, core content. Yeah, so that's what I, I, I differentiate. It's like core content and then repurpose content. So, for me, core content the best type of core content to repurpose is definitely a podcast. Um, You're able to kind of break it down a little bit easier than some other uh, pieces of content. Um, For example, if you started with images, it's, you can do, you can definitely repurpose an image, but it takes a little bit more work than uh, repurposing audio. Video is another brilliant a brilliant way of starting uh, of of core content. Um, And, you know, especially if you combine video and podcast together, um, that is like the, I don't know, the holy grail of the core content starting (laughs) point. I mean, you look at somebody like uh, Gary Vee, a perfect example of repurposing content. He does it brilliantly. Um, And it's all started. The starting point is video and podcasting. So it's, it, you know, he does those sessions where he just sits down. And I, I mean, yes, obviously Gary would have a probably an entire marketing agency that would repurpose for him, but it all starts from that core. It all starts from that core, that core point. So yeah. And I'd say blogs is also another, another great way of doing core content. Um, especially if you're quite proficient at doing blogs. So repurposing a blog is a great way. Um, Those are the three that I would say are excellent uh, starting points if you want to repurpose content. Mm -hmm. Um, But they, yeah, you can do, you can do imagery if you're a, you know, say you're a graphic designer and you're creating that stuff, you probably would just need, yeah, you would, I would say you would then need that extra skill set of being able to be a good writer or be a good talker or, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, But not just podcasts, I guess. Uh, It's, I guess if I broke it down into audio, video and written um, because I know some people who record their meetings with their clients and then they repurpose those um, because Mm. they're dropping all of that stuff in meetings all the time. You know, uh, keynote presentations are another one, workshops are another one. Um, If you can get somebody to record and or you record it for yourself, again, Mm. it's another brilliant way of doing it. Um, Yeah, there's heaps of heaps of I'm like a kid in a candy store yeah. Like, yeah do that do that stick a video in front of you stick it, record it record it stick your phone down record it buy a you know buy a hundred buck recorder and record your sessions that you're talking to yeah like you just get it into another format yeah keynote presentations is a big one that people miss I think if you're talking mm. or speaking at a conference or a meeting or a workshop just plug something into your phone if that's all like just plug a mic in and get a lapel mic and and just use that and start repurposing some of that content you can start with transcribing or whatever I guess yeah. a lot of people are sort of in that um, might be questioning as well or wondering like won't people know that you're repurposing your content just do, how do you answer that kind of concern so uh, so that that's that's uh, that's a good question actually so 
I mean, for me, it's not necessarily about them knowing that you're okay. Let me take a couple of steps back, right? Because if you've got, if you're creating a, 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 the podcast, right, you're going to have a few key messages that you're going to be delivering to your audience. So you, the expectation would be no matter, and you know, if it's good brand marketing or you're, you're on, you're on a solid brand is that those messages should be coming through every piece of content that you deliver. Um, so will they know that you've, uh, repurposed maybe. Um, but at the end of the day, if I see somebody on Instagram, like for example, I was looking at your post today on LinkedIn, you've put a post up about my next thing, you know, my podcast is live, which was last week's episode, I believe. Um, that's repurposed content. So you've stuck an image on it. You've talked about that podcast, but you're promoting the podcast at the same time. You're also promoting yourself. You're promoting what you do. You're promoting your business. Um, so I would expect that. So I don't have a negative reaction to that. And I don't think most people do. Um, and you know, it's the same thing as evergreen content. Somebody, you know, you might repost that same blog or that maybe you repost promotion to the podcast again for episode seven in three months time. Uh, I think with the amount of people that are on particularly social media or the amount of people that are out there and following you, the chances of them seeing the same thing or making even that connection about going, uh, oh, she's just recycling or he's just recycling is pretty minimal, you know? And I don't think most people would have a negative reaction to that. And for those that actually do pick up on that stuff, I'd say they're actually studying you to try and actually replicate what you're doing, not actually <laughs> see, because that's, that's the thing, right? You, you watch the big players or you watch other mm-hmm. people and you're like, oh, they're really good. I wonder how they're doing it. And you start to see those types of things. Um, and, you know, or you could just be that stalker person that, is connected to every social media of them and all of like everything. everything. Like, yeah, Yeah. like we, you know, we, we, we share a good friend in Kate Toon and, and I do, I follow her on everything and I see all of her posts and I see all of those things, but I, you know, I'm a, I'm a rare stalker of Kate Toon. So, (laughs) uh, you know, that's why I see those things. Uh, Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't think it's a negative and yeah, it's that, it's that, that, that globe I spoke about earlier. It's constantly yeah. feeding the same things. And yeah, I agree. I don't, I don't think it's a negative either. And I think to some degree people um, expect it. And when you're talking about repurposing in some of the ways, which we are going to touch on later, by the way, of how you can, what pieces of content you can get out of a podcast episode. Um, I think that people aren't necessarily realizing that you're repurposing because it looks different in the different ways you're using it. So I don't think there's an issue with it. And I often do say to people like share an episode more than once depends what um, platform you're on and what you're using. But that whole Facebook, for example, with the one to 2% of people seeing your page, like if you put it there once, the chances of them of everyone seeing it is so, so slim. So put it there again a following week or in a couple of weeks. And then, as you say, if it's evergreen, put it out again in a couple of months' time. Obviously, LinkedIn might be a little bit different. Um, I wouldn't repurpose it at, like the same episode so much on there, but but what, find out what works for you and, and go from there. Yeah. So I'd love to sort of touch on how it helps with, with social media. Mm-hmm. So how does it help with social media? So... I mean, social media is a, is a beast, right? It's, it's this huge monster that just consumes content left, right and center. And you touched on it a little bit there yourself, Linda, with, you know, the one to 2% people seeing your posts. You need to, you know, it's a scatter. Oh, I guess it's a bit of a scatter gun, machine gun type of approach is the more, the more you put out, the higher the chance that someone will see it and the higher the chance you're going to drive connection and you're going to get them to do something. Um, but you could do it in a way that people don't, yeah, that it's different. So as an example, you might post your show notes in a, a, an episode graphic, for example, that's the first piece of content for that episode that goes out. The second piece might be a quote from that, uh, that episode that you've put out. You might do that three, four times over the course of say a month for all for that exact same episode. No one's going to know that that's connected to that one episode. It's look like brand new content. Um, you might create uh, like audiograms are really big. Um, they've been big for, for, I don't know, about a year or so, I think, or maybe a little bit longer. You might do three or four of them from one episode. There's again, what we're up to maybe 10 
posts for social media out of one episode and we've just covered video graphic and a post you might then do a blog out of it so then you know we're up to maybe number 11 and um, then you might sit on that for a little bit and then in three months time you just do the all that whole cycle all over again um, and if you've got episodes coming out week after week I mean that's that's pretty that would pretty much be uh, what 40 40 to 50 potential social media posts on one platform in a month uh, so yeah it feels I mean it can be Word of caution on that, you need to have stuff to balance that, that out uh, as well. Can't just do that stuff because then it does, you know, someone, it, link, uh, not LinkedIn, sorry, Instagram is, is a perfect example of that. If you go to someone's po- uh, yeah, profile and they're just using their podcast or, you know, a video or whatever, a uh, video you can kind of get away with. It's a little bit different. But yeah, if you're just using your podcast to promote on Instagram, you know, someone hits your profile and it's just walls of all these kind of similar-ish graphics, quotes, audiograms. You're just like, whoa, sales page, and you just kind of like click off. So it can definitely help you feed the social media beast with content, but it, it, it then can go the other way if you're not a little bit careful of it. So, um, yeah, but if you're doing that, then, you know, if you've got that at your back of, back of your mind about, you know, putting other things out and, you know, other images and other graphics and doing lives and all of that stuff. It's very, I mean, very, very quickly, you maybe are spending two, three hours a week and you would potentially, I don't know, look over three months, you probably would easily create a year's worth of content. Like it's very easy to get to that place. So yeah, that's how it helps with social media. You will always have a bank of stuff that you can put out um, that's going to promote something um, mm. not in a salesy kind of way um yeah it's interesting because because i've just started on my podcast journey it's that i have very much got that in mind of not so i will definitely be starting to um re uh remarket my episodes re-promote my episodes but because i've only got seven in the bag at the moment i feel like if i keep doing it it'll be too too much me me me, me my, mm. so it's just, so it's finding that balance of sharing other useful information and sharing other bits and pieces rather than it look like yeah so it's quite interesting you say that because I'm very conscious of that at the moment that if someone went to my feed is all they're going to see the the cover art for the podcast with different mm-hmm. images and bits and pieces so um yeah it's just being mindful about it but I love it just blows your mind when you talk to someone like yeah. you and you think you can get so much content so much yeah from one, you put all this work into doing your podcast episodes. Like, why not create all of these different pieces of content and yeah, use them totally. in different ways? And you can use them, like, for me as well. It's a so some people, when they develop or they start doing repurposing, they kind of stop at that graphic quote level. Mm-hmm. Um, but you were just talking then about, like, you know, uh, if someone went to my feed and I'd be scared that all they would see is that stuff. But you can also pull out some stuff from. Uh, your podcast. And if you know, say you're not that great at Facebook lives or you're not that great at doing videos, um, you might be able to just pull out and, and I'm going to shout out to another, another uh, good friend of mine, Jenny DeLacy, who is who's the, the, the video marketing yes. queen yes, um, who is. has a, yeah, a really unique way of doing video scripts and a, a podcast, re, you know, you could repurpose a podcast to just pull out some great dot points and just have them there and just do a really quick live. Like that's another way that you can repurpose your content from your podcast really easily. You've already had the conversation. So you, you know what you said. So you've kind of practiced to it. And look, my thing, you know, if you're not good at lives, just do a video in a quick five minute thing, pop it. And then you take that video and you pop it on Instagram, you pop it on LinkedIn, you pop it on that. And then you've repurposed your podcast, you've repurposed the video, you've repurposed it onto different platforms, then you can cut it up into stories. So uh, there's so many different unique ways that you can actually do it. Um, And we haven't even touched on email marketing or, you know, (laughs) any of that, you know, any of those other amazing things that you can, that you can uh, uh, use to leverage your podcast. So, um, and you and your business. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that Instagram stories is I'm seeing mm. lots of people have success with Instagram stories. So get in there yeah. and do a video, whether it's a teaser of one that's about to come out or whether it's telling people that it's one that's just been released or yeah, I tend to do that more on Instagram than I do in Facebook. So that's a really good tip there. Actually. I, I love that one. I need to, uh, I definitely need to, uh, <laughs> talk to you more as I'm learning a lot about <laughs> out of this conversation as everybody who's listening. So that's really helpful. So let's touch on, we've sort of talked about, you have touched on bits of 
information you can get from mm-hmm. one podcast episode. Let's actually get down to the nitty gritty of how much content can you get from an episode? Okay. So, all right, let's, um, let's, I'll use my fingers to count off what I'm doing. So uh, the first obvious one would be you can get show notes out of a out of a podcast. Um, you can get social graphics. So I'm talking about static images. Um, then you can take those images and you could post them as either posts or stories because obviously they have different formats. Um, you can get uh, a blog post article, whether that's direct quotes from the, from the podcast or it's just something that you've maybe written or outsourced to somebody to write for you that's inspired by the podcast. So kind of, you know, podcast adjacent, I guess I would say. Um, then you can do, obviously, slide decks are still a big thing in some places. Um, I have seen people been using, uh, cutting, making slide decks in a format of, in, uh, yeah, particularly Instagram stories. So, you know, they have drop a 24-hour uh, series of like 40 slides that go up that is just an informa- information about um, what was discussed on a podcast. Um, so that's a great, another really interesting thing that's just come up. Um, you can get video from your podcast. So whether that's an audiogram or you've actually yeah so you can load the whole thing up to youtube um is another great uh method that you can get your podcast out there um you can then cut it up into smaller videos uh you've got audiograms um you can potentially then leverage that all of that stuff that we've got to now and that could then feed up into uh like a mini course whether that be either a lead gen a trip product or an actual proper I'm selling everything. Here is module one. Um, you can then bunch your, if you've done multiple podcasts, you might create a highlight reel of podcasts. You might pull. Uh, so for example, I talk to people, podcasters all the time about make sure that you put in your podcast one or two questions that you ask every single guest because when you get to 10, well, then you could just pull those answers out and go, so I just want to do a highlight episode so you can then start getting another podcast out of your podcast. So, yeah, you can feed the beast, right? Feed mm-hmm. It feeds on itself. <laughs> um, so you can get podcasts out of that. Um, you could get, um, what is a couple of other things that we can get out of here? Yeah, uh, so we've covered video. Oh, then there's mail out. So you might then just send out a mail out every week, which is maybe just a highlight your quotes, your images, something like that that goes out. Um, you could then do an email sequence, which then links to that could be a mini training course, so a lead gen. Um, say, hey, oh, who did that? Um, so the Australian Writers Centre, um, which mm-hmm. is uh, they have the Should I? Uh, so You Want to Be a Writer podcast hosted by Valerie Koo and Alison Tate. Um, they actually did, uh, they've got, I think, about 250 or 300 episodes now um, under their umbrella they did a special uh ya and fantasy uh like lead gen thing and mm-hmm. basically they took a couple of articles and they inter- and some of the interviews they'd done and then they chose all of the podcast episodes that had been released previously and go here you go and it was just a lead gen it didn't cost anything but you're on their mailing list now so you know and, you know mailing lists are gold that's your yes. that's your gold you know very, very much what you need to be building. Right. And I mean, I got a highlight, I think it was a list of 25 episodes I could listen to plus an accompanying article for each episode that kind of taught me how to write YA and uh, fantasy books. They've done that with crime. They've done that with a whole bunch of, so that's another really interesting way of um, repurposing. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, mail outs, uh, you could then, and then obviously you've got all this other content. So you then can do, you know, a second wrap up email that you could potentially send out to people. Um, and then you've got social content. So you can put quotes out, you can put that out. You can, yeah, if you're not good at writing, you can potentially just kind of get your transcription and be like, Hey, I spoke to Shannon and he said, blah, blah, blah. And it's just a post out. Um, yeah, all of that stuff. Then you've got Facebook lives. Uh, you've got Instagram lives. You've got, uh, Potentially you could do even a YouTube channel about what you're doing about your podcast. If you record it, um, there are, uh, who is it like, is it, uh, Joe Rogan and all those like higher end podcasters, they all do their stuff face to face live in the studio with people. Mm. And that goes up as their YouTube channel and their podcast. It's not, yeah, it's not two separate things. It's exactly the same thing. Yeah, no, not at all. So yeah, that's what we're up to 12, 13 
Oh, no, I've like counted way more than that. You've just like been rolling them off. Or 150 potential <laughs> uh, different things you can do for it. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's what you could get out of, yeah, one, one or 10, 10 episodes or whatever. Yeah, I think to me, and I guess the way I do content strategy is my content strategies are layered from the beginning of mm. this is where we're starting from, this is where we need to get to, and this is how we're going to repurpose it, and then this is how we're going to then you know, distribute the repurposed. And then this is how we're then going to repurpose the repurposed and then how we're going to do it a third time. So I always go down to three layers. Um, and you always have at the back of your mind, this is what I'm doing six months, 12 months, 18 months down the track. Um, because yeah, it's important, uh, you know, and I know that we'll probably talk about processes and, and how, and I know there's mm. members of your group that were asking those questions. That's definitely what you need to you don't want to like paint yourself into a corner when you're like, oh no, now I'm six months in and I have to like kind of like start all these things and you haven't really yeah. thought about that. So yeah. yeah. So you think but, it's yeah. a good idea to sort of really step back and strategize exactly how you're going to do it from the beginning and just, yeah. you know, whether it's from the beginning of your pod, I don't mean the beginning of your podcast. I mean, sit down before you think about how you're going to repurpose and really work out what you're going to do is that the approach that you take you sort of sit down and work out a strategy first and then do the steps of how it will work or what do you yeah so yeah i like to i like to plan mainly because i just want to make sure i've got options so it it you might not ever do video and that's cool you don't have to do that like although side note i would highly recommend you do but (laughs) yeah i mean that's that's the format that's the gold format right um yeah, you might never want to do that. You might never want to start a Facebook group, for example. You might not want to do those things, but at least have that there as an option for you if you do want to go there. And I think you need to do that through at least a little bit of planning. Like I'm not, I mean, I know it probably sounded complicated when I was explaining it, but it's really, it's just columns on a spreadsheet. It's not, it's not a complex thing. It just means that yeah, so I don't get six months down the track and then I'm like, oh, now I have to go back through six months worth of podcasts to work out what potentially I could turn into a course or what potentially yeah. I can do that. I can just very easily go, oh, yeah, definitely episode 7, 8, 23, 16. Those are definitely the ones I want to like tag to go, yes, they would be brilliant for educational because, you know, every episode's yeah. different. So, yeah, yeah that's I what I mean. Starting with that, um, starting with a a transcript when you're talking about your podcast starting with a transcript is probably the best starting point now whether you I I find the whole transcript a really interesting question because I talk to people a lot about it it can cost a lot of money to get a transcript whether it's through Rev or whether it's through a transcriptionist or whether people decide whether they go through the cheaper ones but I think if you start with that and if you if you know I think Kate Toon brought up a really interesting point on a previous episode of mine that um, she doesn't go through and correct everything. If there's parts that aren't transcribed properly, then she just leaves that in there because people have an expectation that it's it might not be perfect. Um, but it's it's such a good starting point for you repurposing. Like it's to to pull out your show notes, your quotes, your all sorts of different things. So, and um, you talking about like pulling it together a mini course. I actually have a few clients who have pulled together eBooks that they sell. For. Oh yeah. I, I didn't even talk about that, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You can do books. You can do all of that stuff. Like it's a, yeah, it's, it's, um, oh, and I also didn't talk about conferences that could potentially be <laughs> keynote speak. So yeah, like, yeah. yeah, there's, there's so much that you can do, but yeah, eBooks is a good one. And I mean, you know, if it's, and I guess transcripting as well, like it can be tricky. Like um, we've, I've had experience with direct transcribers through Upwork. I've had uh, obviously used Rev Rev before. Um, And, yeah, it depends. I mean, if you're doing three-hour-long podcasts, it's going to be expensive if you went through Rev. I mean, that's what uh, that would be 180 bucks to get a a transcription back. So, yeah, that's expensive. You would then want to make sure what you're getting off the back of it that you've got sponsorship or something to to cover off that cost because, yeah, that's big. If it, you're doing 20 minute episodes, it's 20 bucks. Not so, yeah. you know, not so much. But a lot of those transcribers are on Upwork and will work for significantly less than what they do on Upwork. Um, yeah, I think we've got one that's, it's no matter what, uh, what was the, it was like $15 per audio hour. It's like the most crazy thing ever. I mean, it's like 15 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. That's cheap. Like to me, I was like, that's easy. That's a week. That's, yeah. that's, 
very easy. I wouldn't even be looking to cover that cost. So, yeah, yeah but, yeah, definitely I mean, my, my, yeah. I think my um, experience with it is that I do prefer onshore transcription. It's just because I don't have to check it. So for me, that's it, it, it's just a matter of choice. But, yeah, there's different options there. But that transcription piece is just so... Um, so useful but I, I my next question is so how easy is it to repurpose and what sort of tools do you need to actually do it so this is all on i mean i guess for me this is all about the skill level that somebody has right and i think it's also a little bit different depending on where you're coming in at it, it and where your podcast is starting. So if you've already got an established network and you've already got all of these, you know, you're coming in at maybe it's the last piece of high-end content that you're, not last, but, you know, you've done the the, the, the yards of years of content development and, you, you know, lots of social and you've got a big network. I don't think you need to probably go as hard with um, repurposing. Um, if you're stuck and, and I guess as well, you would layer onto that about what your podcast is, is actually for. Is it, is it a business driver? Is, is it a leads thing for you? Is it not? Is it just a bit of fun? All of those things are going to play into about, yeah, what you want to get out of it, which obviously, Mm -hmm. you know, adds in your, your degree of difficult difficulty layer. And then for me, it's about what your skills are. So are you, are you actually good at all of the, you know, creating graphics and creating videos and editing and all of that stuff because then to me it's a factor of time so a do you have that time because you know, not a lot of people do like are you prepared to give up a saturday you know saturday or a weekend every month to do all of this stuff that's going to be a good question for you um and say you are i mean there's some brilliant really amazing tools online i mean canva is one that sticks out in mind for me straight away um yeah, having templates. I personally use the Adobe Suite as that's what I'm used to. That's my background. Um, so I find it actually, well, I get frustrated with what I get limited to do in um in Canva. Um, I'm like, why would I just do that? Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's all about your skill level and and what you want to achieve, how much you want to repurpose. Yeah, you know, all of those factors come into it. So it can be easy. It can be something you curse. Um, if you're on the cursing side of the fence, I would say maybe look at getting someone to do it for you because, you know, it's, I mean, to me, it should be, unless your business is literally the podcast and you want to be an, a keynote speaker and you want to do all of those things, then your business really is about putting that stuff out. So maybe you want to do that stuff. Um, if you are, yeah, running a e-commerce store and your podcast is a lead thing or a, or a branding recognition thing, you probably don't have the time to spend then creating all of this stuff that goes with it um, or, or maybe want to. Mm. Um, so yeah, I would definitely look at finding some people to, to help you out with all of it or some of it or yeah, what you want to do. There's, there's uh, plenty of options. Mm, I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit biased to outsourcing. I'm a big, big, I'm exactly the same. Like if it's not your, if it's not in like a money-making mode for you, then outsource it or or just get some training in it or just get someone to help you show you how to do it. And even, then- even if it is just the thing that, you know, it's not necessarily a money thing for you, if it's not fun for you, then like, yeah. Like, why do you want to give up your time to not do something that's fun? I, get I mean, frustrated you know, over it I hit up doing it. Yeah, I mean, for me, I hit a particular age milestone this week, and I'm like, mm, I don't have time for this anymore, <laughs> man. I've been in a wheelchair before I know it, so I don't want to be sitting there doing stuff I don't like anymore. Like, no, not at all. I got yeah. wine to drink. Yeah, like, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, yeah. So how hard is it? Is about your skill level, what you want to do, all of those things. And yeah, tools. Canva is a good one. Um, I've used a program called Headliner before. It mm-hmm. was free, and it was mind blowing the things that you got for free. Uh, it pretty much does audiograms um, mm-hmm. for you. Um, it's it's fairly cheap though uh, yeah. to produce it. And I think, I think you still there's get quite a certain a few... number for free with Headliner. And then... <sighs> yeah, it's like three a month or something. It's it's um it is a small amount. Um, and I'm pretty sure they put their brand logo on stuff that you export. Or you get like three that don't have it, something like that. Yeah. But yeah, Headliner is a great thing. Um, but again, I mean that's it's a it's a bit of a tricky. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a tricky program to use. It can suck up time. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit fiddly. So yeah, it's about your what you want to do really. Um, and there's a couple of headliner esque type things. There's a couple of other things that you can do for yep. video. So um, yeah, there's a few. There's quite a lot of tools out there that you can use uh, to yeah. help you. 
Yep. With the hosting programs, I know some of them also have like the headliner or the snippets within it. So have a look in your hosting program and see if that's included. And um, transcribing some of it, some of them will transcribe now. Again, it, it might just be for a smaller number of minutes, but it's worth it. And some in. do ID. I mean, I think they do ID3 and all that kind of stuff, which you should uh, you should always be ID3 in your podcasts. Yes. Um, yes, that's you a should. big thing. Make <laughs> sure you do that. Um, yeah. And look, to me as well, what helps is templates. So if yeah. you have if you go into repurposing, you really, really the first step after you've strategized or before is you really need to make sure you've got a brand guide. You need to know like what it's going to look like, you know, because that sucks up so much time if you're changing everything every yeah. time. So yeah, brand guide, a strategy, and then create templates that will then really help you turn that stuff around or, you know, even pay someone just to do the templates for you. Like that's a huge time saver for you as well. So yeah. Absolutely agree. Well, I'm going to jump into some of the questions now from the um, Australian Podcasters Collaborative Group, which I know that you're a part of. So you've seen yes. um, the, I put a call out in there and told them that we were chatting today. So we have quite a few questions. The first couple are from Jo and she asks how to make the process super fast and efficient. And the second part of her question is how to outsource it and so setting yep. up systems or something like that. Uh, yeah, so we just started touching on that actually, as I love yep. the way the conversation flows. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's it's about it's about really spending the time up front. So you've got to plan things out. You really need to know where you're going to go. You need to know what you want to develop um, because then you can leverage off of that and put it into systems to do that stuff. So if, for example. I mean, just just to process the you've got the podcast audio edited, ready to go. Where in that process is the transcription going to sit? So is that going to be before? Um, because there are advantages to getting a raw audio file edited if you're doing it yourself. You might use that to actually go. I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to cut this out. Um, then you might need to re-transcribe it, or you might update that as you go. So there, we've got a little bit of planning. You need to work out where that is. Um, I would say after is probably a little bit easier. So you need to know where that's going to fit. Then you need to know timing. So do you want to have some pieces ready to go before you launch as a teaser? So where is that going to sit? How much time are you going to give yourself to do that? Um, then post. Okay, what? when are you going to post these things out? Are you going to check your social uh, analytics and work out when's the best time to actually do your posting? Are you going to schedule it? Are you going to do it uh, manually? You've got to work those things out as well um, and as well the template thing. So what are your, you know, get down to the, the real basics of it. What are your brand colors? What are the hashtags you've got to use on Instagram? What, uh, where is your audience sitting? Who is your audience? Those things really drive the, that will not, not necessarily drive, but they underpin and it's the foundation of repurposing. Um, so if you don't have those things, you can repurpose. I'm not saying you can't, but it's probably going to take you longer than someone who has got all of those things in play um, because you're not thinking, you know, what colour is my text going to be on this this mm -hmm. week and what's my font going to be this week? And I don't know they sound really basic, but, yeah, I mean, you get the basics wrong and you're on a, you know, your house with no foundation really, you know, <laughs> there's it, everything can fall apart. Oh, yeah, yeah, it totally does. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that to me is is do the planning and sit down and take some time to work that through. Um, and once you've actually been through that process, then it's about bringing someone in to that process. Um, I am, uh, they don't pay me, but I, uh, you know, I have contemplated getting a tattoo of the Asana logo on my body somewhere. <laughs> I am a massive fan of Asana. I love it. It is a brilliant system for this kind of stuff um, because you can, yeah, you template your processes up and you just hit it, assign people, do all of that kind of stuff. It's, it's really, really easy. Um, I know people use Trello, I think Trello is Asana's poor cousin, but that's okay. That's just, I mean, just all these Trello users are like, no, revolt. Yeah, exactly. um, but yeah, I'm uh, because yeah, I've I've evolved from Trello to Asana. So um, yeah, but all anything online, you know, a Google a Google Doc or a Google Sheet even is a is the way to outsource that stuff. Um, and with outsourcing, I would. Yeah, then you've got your play of budgeting. Um, what's going to work for you? What is the best? You know what is it, time versus dollar and all of that kind of stuff that you would add into it um, and what they can do for you. So is it, will will that person you're outsourcing to, will they be working with you like 
they love your brand and the thing you do like you do? Or is it just a, you drop something in and then it spits out the other end and you're really not involved with it? And that might work for you. So it, it all depends on, yeah, what you want to do and, and how you want to do it. I think that outsourcing has the potential to, yeah, I mean, to me, it's like it puts your, it puts your, um, your content on steroids. It just it's, it goes from, you know, a trickle to like a fire hydrant exploding. It's like it, it really can have that, that, that effect on what you're doing. And um, you might only need to do it, you know, part time. So maybe you do it for two, three month blocks, you know, quarter one and quarter three, and there's all your content for the year. And then you've got other things that come in and trickle. But yeah. There's so many different ways that you can work with it. And I think the best, con- you know, the best outsourcing partner would definitely be someone who works with you uh, and is like, yeah, how about we don't do it next month? And because you've got so much stuff, let's just hold off and we'll do it the month after. So yeah, the flexibility and all that stuff. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Works with you and is, 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 has an interest, I guess, in helping you grow your business. And I know certainly when we work with clients, when it comes to them outsourcing up their podcast with us, I, I'm like you, I'm a massive Asana fan. I've worked with Trello, I've worked with Monday.com um, and different clients work with different systems. So that's fine. Um, but everything is templated. Every single thing is templated so that, on you know, when we have a client that comes on board, every single step of the process of working with them on their weekly show is there, it's allocated to the team, it's crossed off, it's done because we don't want to miss a step like, oh, that forgot, that wasn't loaded back up to a Google Drive folder for them or anything like that. So it's just a matter of, as you say, plan first, then work out whether it's Asana, whether it's Trello, whether it's a Google Sheet and just really just outline every single step so that you just tick it off or cross it. It's like some people use a paper checklist. You know, it's, it's just um, knowing that sort of stuff and, and having an idea. And I hope that answers your question, Joe, because I know that you mentioned that you wanted to get um, one of your children to, to do some of the repurposing for you. So if you just set it out exactly what you want done every single episode, that's um, that's pretty much a good way to get started and then oh, can, I totally agree yeah yeah using a system like Asana or a what even a Google spreadsheet or a Google doc just if you want to record a loom video on how to do that part or anything like that just put the link to that video in the Asana task or the Google sheet and mm-hmm. then they can always go back to that too so setting up those systems at the beginning is yeah obviously a great start there so we have another question here from chris he says when repurposing how do you structure the content differently for different platforms um okay so uh, this again i mean again it goes back to templates right so you're going to be if you're creating image graphics or video for social platforms Facebook is different to Instagram, is different to Pinterest, is different to Twitter, is different to all of those things. There are some that are similar. So stories tend to be exactly the same format. Um, So you could get away with doing like one story format for all of the places. Um, They also work for Pinterest the way that the format is. So there are some crossovers. But, yeah, for me, it's I, I just Google sizes for social media images or whatever. And there's all these brilliant people out there who've created these lovely infographics. Um, and I just tend to do that. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty plugged into it. So usually I'm on all the newsletters if anything changes. Um, but yeah, once every three months or something like that, um, that's when I go and actually will do another Google search just to make sure I haven't missed something that, you know, Instagram suddenly like shut everything, it made everything smaller or, or whatever. Um, and it does mean that you are creating the set kind of, I guess the same thing, you know, it's the same quote for a Facebook size, the same quote for an Instagram size, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that's where the templates come in. So it's just a matter of, yeah, I mean, this is where Canva is brilliant for that stuff. You just, mm. I just ha- have all the tabs open and you go to one and you're like, copy it from the transcript and then you just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste and export all of that stuff. Um, so that's the, yeah, that's how I get around the formats um, for it. Um, you just do that pre-work up front and it just makes it so much easier to uh, to do all that stuff. It actually goes goes really quickly and that's when you, yeah, you sit there and you look at your, you see your downloads after that episode or, you, you, you know, what you've exported and you're like, oh, my God, I've actually got like 150 images here. And you're like, wow, <laughs> oh, my God, like, I just did that so fast. So, yeah, yeah that, that's yeah. how you do the, the, the formats. 
Okay. All right. Excellent. And our last question from the group is from Jen, and she was wondering if there's any tips and tricks that are left of field. So someone had mentioned um, that she heard uh, to repurpose show notes on medium.com. Um, so we might touch on that one. And then if you've got any mm-hmm. other tips. Um, yeah. So medium, medium is a, is a bit of a f- funny, interesting one. So I think where this came from is, and I don't, I'm not going to say in any way, shape or form that I am an SEO ex- expert because I am <laughs> certainly not. Um, but there is some, uh, there is a school of thought out there, I guess, that you can publish blogs on medium and they don't come up and compete with duplicate content. So it's kind of considered its own in Google search results. To me, I can't, from from what I do know about SEO, it doesn't seem, I don't understand how that math works, how you wouldn't be competing with Medium. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, so I don't know, but that's where it would come from. So I guess for me, Medium is just another platform. So if you're going to post to Medium, sure, there might be some advantages, but just keep in mind that you're going to need to be building another audience on another platform because it is another platform. So, and I don't know if I'm pretty sure medium wouldn't have a player on it. So you're posting us to show notes on there only for them to be then linked to your website or iTunes or somewhere else for them to go and listen to the podcast. Um, do I think it would hurt in the long run? No, but to me, it's another, it's another step. It's another thing you need to think about. Like, am I adding value to this audience? Am I connecting? You need to know the thing, which means you're going to need to find people to follow. You're going to need to comment. You're going to need to do all of the things that you do on every other social platform. Um, I would think maybe blogs is probably, or articles is maybe a bit, maybe a bit better for posting onto medium. But yeah, I mean, if you want to go down that path, I don't think it would do you any harm, but I don't, yeah, it's all those considerations, you know? Yeah, I agree with you on that. I'm not sure that there's necessarily a lot of value in putting your show notes onto Medium, but listen, I would just say go and have a look and follow people and see if it works. And certainly we can ask that question in the group and see if anybody else is doing it. But I do see the value obviously in the articles and the blogs. And yeah. I too have heard people say, put your, your blogs and your long post blog bomb. Blech, can't speak. Long form. Long form <laughs> blog posts on there, absolutely, yeah. and it doesn't harm your SEO um, for duplicate content or anything like that. But I just don't know if the value of, of, of the information that you're giving in the show notes will get the traction you want on Medium because really your show notes are trying to entice somebody to click on that player yeah. and listen. Yeah. So they're going to have to be really good show notes to really make somebody then click from Medium out to your website to click on to yeah player and, and, and listen. So yeah, I guess you could test it and see, see what happens, watch your analytics and watch your stats in your host and everything and see what happens there. Yeah. And I think as well, like, I mean, I think you just touched on a little bit there, Lindell, about what kind of show notes you're actually producing, because I know that like quite a lot of people's show notes these days are just like maybe a paragraph. It's not really even you know, like gone are the days of multiple paragraphs explaining the episode, what you learned, take key takeaways, you know, transcripts, like a lot of the, yeah, a lot of the big players. I mean, look, I mean, obviously they don't need to promote as much. They've got a, a million downloads. So <laughs> yeah, it's like Instagram, you know, the 2 million followers. It's like, oh, I don't even use hashtags, but um, yeah, it depends on what you're putting there. If you're, if you're writing practically an article, on every single podcast episode, then I would probably say, yeah, mm. po- like repurpose yep. that to me. Yeah, like make it work for you, man. You've put a lot of, a lot of effort into that. But yeah, if you're not, it's, it's just noise, really. Don't add to the noise. Don't add to content noise. There's, there's so much noise out there. There sure is. There sure is. And I agree with you on that. That's totally true because people do write their show notes differently. And that's a whole other question and a whole other episode on whether you even do show notes because I've got so many people that are like show notes are just like not their waste of time and others that are like, no, 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 we're doing show notes and we're going to really, you know, make the most out of them. So it's it's just a difference of opinion there. So, cool. Oh, and there was tips, wasn't there? Was there, there was tips? tips. Did I give a tip? left of field tips that Have you I got any tips? So uh, I've probably like to added quite a a set a few already through this. Um, And I did say, I know I did say earlier that video is, is a thing. Get, get into video. Like if you can 
get record your podcast. If you can do your podcast in person, do your podcast in person, set up a camera and record them because what you can then take from that is incredible that you can, the connections that you make video is uh, far and away the biggest connector on social media platforms. It is the biggest connector of all content. So if you can video do video and if all you can do is zoom like me and Linda are in a zoom right now, record that, like record it, have it there. Even if you don't do something with it for a year, just have it there. It, it yeah, it's the video is, is the, is the thing that's going to get you uh, probably connection. Second to that, I would say your mail list is going to be your best avenue for promoting your podcast. Uh, we're seeing, yep. I know with the podcasters that I work for, um, I'm now starting to see that the n- highest number of downloads they get is on the day that they go live and it's the day that they actually mail to their, their database. Mm-hmm. Those are the days of the highest numbers. So I would say make sure that that's where you're spending a lot of enough time or most time. Um, and yeah, my other tip would be you don't have to do that all, all on your own. I, I would say reach out and look for someone that can help you, um, whether it's a strategy, whether it's helping for templates for, or actually doing all of it for you. Um, look into the options of outsourcing because you really can, especially with a, co- a podcast, you can really create so much additional content that will promote the podcast. It will promote you. It will promote your business. It will do all of those things that you want to do um, really actually quite easily. So yeah, yeah, they they are pretty much my tips. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's good. That's uh, awesome. And and it's interesting you say about the um, email marketing because I'm the same, like I've started emailing out my um, episodes every week. And what I do is I don't email, like I, I let it drop first and this is just me testing it and experimenting at the moment. So I let it drop through on a Monday on, and the subscribers get it on a Monday. I'll post it onto like one or two social platforms, but then I'll wait a few days to send it out to my email list because I want to just to see where the, the, the traffic's coming from. And I do definitely see a spike when it goes to the email list as well. And yes, I've had people unsubscribe and I understand that, but you know that's fair enough if they I'm still want to test whether I do it weekly or fortnightly or monthly but at the moment I'm doing it weekly and all in all I haven't had that many people unsubscribe so yeah yeah, I think that's a really valuable tip and funnily enough you've answered kind of at the end of my every interview I ask a couple of questions and you've answered one of them already with what is your best tip about podcasting I'm going to ask you what do you wish you'd known when you started Okay, so here's the interesting thing. I personally don't have a podcast, but I am actually about to start. I'm in the work. So I have my, I've got my concept. I've got all of that stuff. I've got my gear. So I'm in that, you know, I'm in the gear phase, right? Like I've got the <laughs> microphone, I've got the boom arm. Da, 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 da. Um, so I'm in, but what is it? The phase one of danger of never launching a podcast. <laughs> so I'm in that phase right now. Um, but yeah, so for me, what tip would you have, Lyndall, about starting a podcast? What could you give me? Oh, you're throwing you it back to me. You? I'm <laughs> chucking it right back here. We're playing volleyball with this uh, question. Yeah, because, so, yeah, you know, I, everyone's, everyone's different. Um, and then I will actually answer it because I have worked on about 20 podcasts. So I will, but I'm, I'm interested for myself right now. Um, so for me, I've, I, I would say definitely your concept and your strategy, knowing yeah. that sitting down, nutting it all out. What's your, you know, are your audience listening to podcasts? Mm-hmm. You know, where are your audience? What do they want to hear? What's the message you want to hear? And, and particularly with my market, a lot of people and my clients have a business aligned podcast. So in that strategy and concept, you need to make sure that if you're doing a podcast for your business, that it aligns and it funnels into your business activities. That'd be my yeah. that, that's genius. My point. <laughs> and that's, that's pretty much, that would be pretty much the same as me. I, mine is don't worry about the bells and whistles. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Don't worry about like, you know, what platform, don't worry about your hosting, focus on your content. People connect with content. They, that's what they connect to. You know, I, I listen to some podcasts that have terrible audio, but I don't care because I love what they talk about. Uh, I, you know, all the podcasts that I like is all about what's in the podcast. So yeah, once you get, once you, once you get them to that point, they're there for life. 
they are they are they are your ride or die and and i think that's where podcasting is unique in the content world that you very very quickly build up an audience that are you know from stranger to best friend uh very very quickly it's you know you're, you're in their ear for 40 minutes an hour or whatever and yeah if you connect you don't even have to know all the stuff just make good stuff bring people on that know all the stuff yeah 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 and be genuine that's i think that's a big thing too isn't it well yeah. oh well i can't wait to see your yeah. podcast episode come out i'm <laughs> very sorry your whole podcast show i will definitely be tuning into that because i know thank you got so much you have blown my mind and i'm sure you have blown your listeners minds in Yay. all the stuff that they can be doing with podcasting can you share with our listeners where the best place is that they can find you or contact you and see what products and services you have to offer <laughs> Sure. So the best contact for me, obviously, is the website, which is mightysocialword.com. I am on all the platforms, too many platforms, but I am on all the platforms. So you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. Um, I haunt a lot of Facebook groups. Please feel free to say hello. I love a good laugh. Um, I am also on uh, Twitter, uh, TikTok. I'm on uh, Warehouse, uh, in LinkedIn as well. Um, yeah, find me, have a laugh. Um, that's the best way to stand out with me. And you certainly maybe will be, a a <laughs> be a little bit naughty. Be a little bit naughty. Definitely have a laugh, with Shannon. I have to say, there's uh, lots of times where I'm, I'm going to say your misfortunes. It's not necessarily misfortunes. <laughs> <laughs> some of the things you posted last week did make me laugh, and you probably oh, weren't yeah. laughing at the time. <laughs> I, have, I have to laugh. It's a yeah, comedy That's of errors. Exactly My life right. is a comedy of errors. Uh, life <laughs> is all about laughing. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Shannon. Thank you, Lyndall. Thank you so much. It's been a blast. That episode was so fun to record with Shannon and gosh, I thought I knew quite a bit about content repurposing and ways that people can repurpose their podcast episodes, but wow, I actually think I counted over 20 pieces of content that you can repurpose your episodes into. So I hope you enjoyed that. Now, if you are a Facebook user, I would love for you to jump into the Australian Podcasters Collaborative Group. It is a group for people who are just starting out their podcasting journey right through to seasoned podcasters. It's a really nice energy in that group. So if you want to come in and engage and ask questions, then please feel free to jump in and join us there. Until next time, I'll speak to you next week. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, make sure you subscribe in your podcatcher so you don't miss an episode. And whilst you're there, I'd love it if you'd leave me a rating and review to help other podcasters. Podcasters.